Come up out of your mess. I'm coming for you. Hallelujah. And the Bible said the day you hear his voice, he knocks at the door of our hearts. Hey, this is your time. You may not get another chance. Come on in now. Hallelujah. I, I begin to study the word of God and I have an appreciation when God saved me. I, 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 got, I, I really didn't know what had happened to me. And I started studying the Bible trying to figure out and find out what actually happened to me. Hallelujah. And praise God, I ran up, I ran up on that thing about 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And praise God, I thank God for giving me a brand new life, a brand new hope, and a brand new direction. How many believe what I'm saying here this morning? Hallelujah. Y'all done testified. I'm testified. Praise God. And it's, it, amen. It's a, I, I'm on target. I'm in order because I didn't get up this morning. I didn't get up this morning with the mentality that God ain't good. And that he just had to touch me this morning. Say, get up, Douglas. You got one more day. I didn't get up this morning with the, with the mentality of God owe me something. I know when I first got saved, I had a whole lot of questions that only God could answer, that I could only find in the word of God. And when I start searching the scriptures, I found me. I found why I'm here and what I'm supposed to be doing while I'm here on this earth. Hallelujah. Reach over and get your Bibles. Turn with me, please, to Revelation chapter 4. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to pick up one verse out of that. We're in a series of, of messages on God's living sacrifices. Living sacrifices. Revelation chapter 4, by way of local color, John, the apostle, on the Isle of Patmos, amen, praise God, after God, Jesus Christ, showed himself in his war goals, his war garments, amen. Then we have the, a type of the rapture in the fourth chapter of Revelation where John said, I door, saw a door open in heaven and I heard a voice say, come up hither. Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to hear that voice. Amen, amen now. When he comes from the church, the world won't know what's going on, but he's going to speak and we'll hear his voice. And all of a sudden, before we could even look up, we'll be in his presence. And the Bible says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation 4 and verse 11, read with me. John seen God on his throne. God, John seen 24 elders around the throne of God. John saw four living creatures, four beasts around the throne crying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And praise God when everybody was getting to praise and worship God. The 24 elders fell off, they got off of their thrones, back down, amen, praise God, and threw their crowns before the feet of God Almighty. And listen to what them boys said. Because the 24 elders are the church. Verse 11, doubt, let's read everyone standing. In reverence to God's word. And let's read that 11th verse together. We're in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11. Let's read. Ready? Read. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? For thou hast created what? Thou hast created what? Now, why did he create it? Let's read on. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. Let's read it again. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Let's read that one more time. Hold it. I want you to get it now. I want you to understand that Abel one God and he's worthy of praise because everything was made by him and for him. Let's read. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast
hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. This is the sixth message. You may be seated. The sixth message in this series on God's living sacrifices. This morning, I'm going to talk about living to please God. Living to please God. And I'm talking to saints. I'm talking to the saved. I'm talking to those that have came out of their sins and came over on this side. But for some reason, the devil has got our minds clouded into thinking that God are something. And that's the only reason why we're over here. So we can get more things. So we can have more things. A Santa Claus religion. That God will give us anything. We ain't got to live holy. No, sir. Hallelujah. Grace covered it all. No, 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 no. Titus 2 and 11. Grace teaches us how to live. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. The Bible declares, amen, that the grace of God which brings salvation. Now, grace got a name. What is his name, Chance? Hallelujah, like you know him. What is his name? What is Grace's name? And he's appeared to all men, how through the gospel, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Why? If we don't live it in this world, we're not going to that other world. Amen. Now, so you notice the elders got it right. God is worthy to receive glory and honor and power because through him and for him we were created. Now you know that one verse that answers the, the age old questions that men have asked but they already know the answer but they reject trying to find some other reason why they are here. This answers the question where we came from and why we are on this earth. Hallelujah, sure enough. And so we're looking at this thing in the, in the context of what God deserves. Amen. What God, what we owe God. Why? Because it's him that has created us and not we ourselves. Sure enough now, it don't make no difference what you got in this world here. Don't make no difference how 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 you go up on the plateau in the world. Listen, men and women have left this world that had the world by the throat. But they left everything they got over here. Look at Michael Jackson. They still fighting over Michael Jackson stuff. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One thing I do know, we leave out of here with what we came in with. Nothing. Naked we came and naked we're going. And so praise God, living to please God, I'm dealing mainly with the saints. Why? Because he saved us. He did that. Sure enough now. So we owe him. I owe him. I couldn't deliver myself. You can't deliver yourself. Hallelujah. All fingers point back toward God. Hallelujah. And then he tell us after he saved us, I'm going to tell you how I want you to live. Sure enough, now, didn't he do it to Israel? He didn't choose them because they were the greatest on this earth. He didn't choose them because they had the numbers on their side. He chose them because they were despised, amen. But God, God used one man to bring in a nation that was ordained in this world to show the world that everything else outside of God is an idol and God going to judge you. Sure enough. And so over here, when we get saved, there is no foggy uh, place where we don't know how to live. We got it all in the black book. Sure enough now. See, men's change. This don't. Denominations can't help you. This denomination and any denomination cannot help you. God ain't going to give his glory to no man. He ain't going to give his glory to no organization. His glory he will not give to another. I'm God whether you believe it or not. That's what he said now. That's what he said. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. He said, brother, amen, praise God. See now that I, even I am he. There is no God with me. I kill. I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. And then he said, I lift my hand, Sister Jewel, to the heaven that I made. 
that unto, a, a, unto me every knee going to bow. Hallelujah. And like David prayed, God, make my boast in the Lord. It don't make no difference how close your loved one is, close to death. Pray, God, when God don't give the okay, can't nobody disannul it. How many believe what I'm saying here? That's how he told us, praise God. It don't make no difference where your unsaved loved ones are. Ah, God can reach him. Well, bless his name. I think about old big fella, amen. Pray God used to sit right here in this chair here. Hallelujah. Them doctors gave him up, told his family to come in and pray God. Mother, Mother Jacob said, Mother, Mother Red said, Pastor Douglas, I know you don't know this, but I, I, can you go down and pray for Spencer? And we went down, we fasted about two or three days. And when I walked in there, he was unconscious. And they weren't looking to come this back this way here. And God told me to preach. And so I just started preaching to him. I said, start preaching to him. And then God gave me the, the Holy Ghost said, when I get you up from him, you're going to preach this gospel. All right, you that know Spencer, you that were here, that saw that big boy walk through them doors and come up here and preach out this pulpit after they gave him up. I want every one of you to stand right now. Every one of you that, that saw this man preach in this church here. And then Jesus had the audacity to say, praise God, if you believe me, I'll do it. All things are possible to them that believe. You know, many times we, we look at the vessel that God is using. He said, pray God, if God was so doing so much, how come he don't bless you? You talking about being blessed. How come he don't bless you? How come he don't touch you? Say, listen, brothers and sisters, I supposed to have been dead years ago. Hallelujah. This leg that I walk on now, supposed to have been cut off. Hallelujah. But just like old Jacob, I'm going to touch you, amen, and let you walk. As long as you preach for me, I'm going to let you walk. But I'm going to do you like Jacob. I'm going to give you a limp. I said, well, praise God. Hallelujah. So praise God. Jacob lift up, limped on into heaven, and I'm going the same way. Well, bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank God, amen, praise God, that that pain that used to grip me, praise God, the very, a few days after that, I walked in this pulpit and I started preaching. They had to help me up in this pulpit. Hallelujah. And when I started preaching, I felt the power. And praise God in the middle of that preaching, I stopped preaching. Praise God. Start giving God the praise. Why? Because praise God, God had touched me. He touched me and delivered me. Why bless his name? Hey, every one of you, when you look at me, don't count me out. And I told y'all that's in an impossible situation. I say, hey, you give up when I give up. And I ain't the giving up kind. Hallelujah. Ain't no punk. Amen. Praise the Lord. How you told me to fight the good fight of faith. So every day I wake up, praise God. That's a, a, a battle ahead of me. But I go over to God. I thank God for the victory in Jesus Christ. And now I'm in that groove where it ain't about me. It's about pleasing you. Why bless his name? I read over in Proverbs 16 that when a man's ways please the <laughs> woo, when a man's way please the Lord, brother, he'll cause your enemies to be at peace with you. What does that mean? Do you for peace day for walk? God will shut their mouth. And they'll have to acknowledge your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many live that? How many worked in a place, uh, amen, or lived in a place where there was confusion for the one reason, and that is because you were saved. And then all of a sudden, God changed that thing, and when you, when you got back that next day, pray God, they had an attitude adjustment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What I'm saying is, praise God, that we only got a limited time here, saints. After he saved us, we need to spend our time learning and living to please him. Why bless his name? Oh, thank you, Lord. Turn with me to Micah. Micah asks a few questions around here. In Micah, the sixth chapter, he asks a question. Why ever shall I come before the Lord? Y'all there? Matthew, Ma Micah chapter six and verse six. Notice what he said. Why ever shall I come before the Lord? And bow myself. Now, ain't that humility? Ain't that humility? Bowing down before him, acknowledging him as God. Let's read. 
Why well, when shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the most, for the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings and calves of a year old? Question. Read on. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. Stop there. Look this way here. Every one of you. Israel had gotten so backslid until they start offering their kids up to the devil. Amen. Just like we as a nation have given in to abortion and killing our kids. Show enough. I, I, this ain't popular, but it's right. And God told us, amen, to cry loud. Ain't a preacher that God literally called that he did not tell them to cry loud and spare nobody. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people that transgress in the house of Jacob, in the house of God, their sin. You see? So he says, amen, pray God. Look here. How can I give God to be blessed of God? Let's read on. Question. Verse 8 answers. He showed the old man and what is good and what do the Lord require of thee? What does he demand of us? Number one, but to do justly. Now y'all look this way here. To do justly mean the law, the law of love. You don't do anything that you don't want to be done to you. Jesus Christ said do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's the law of love. That's the commandment of love. That's to do justly. You don't want nobody hoodwinking you. You don't want nobody swindling in you. So you don't do that to them. Hallelujah. You don't want nobody hurting you or your kids or anything else, so you don't hurt nobody else. So that's to do justly. That means to be upright, a man or a woman of integrity. You may be shabbat. To do justly. To love mercy. Why? Mercy is important. You did not know that in the wilderness they had that ark and that ark, the lid that was on top of that ark were two cherubims with their wings stretched toward one another. They couldn't look down in the, in the ark. Why? The faces were not, God is too holy. So they stretched forth their wings. But now when Moses went in that tabernacle and began to pray, the Bible declares that he got right there in between them things. It's called the mercy seat. Did not he tell us in Hebrews? Amen. Pray God about the mercy seat. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Hallelujah. Now, if you're judgmental and you won't forgive and you won't have mercy, don't look for it. Show sure enough now. All right, it's right all by itself. So to do justly, to love mercy. And then what? To walk. What's the opposite of being humble? What is the opposite of being humble? And did not God warn us in Proverbs 6, 6 chapter that the first thing he hates is pride? Didn't he not? Proverbs 16 verse 18, pride go before destruction and a haughty, high-minded, sedated spirit before a fall. I'm it, ain't nobody it but me. I'm right, ain't nobody right but me. That's you talking. Ain't nobody right but God. In order for us to get right, we got to come to God and surrender to God and then live for God. You believe in shame, God? Why bless his name? Come on, come on, come on. Let's read it. He showed the old man what is good and what do the Lord require of thee but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Why? The Lord's voice. Cried unto the city just like the word of God. Every time the word of God comes our way, God is talking to us. What you going to do with this son? What you going to do with this daughter? I'm going to show you the right way. What are you going to do with what you heard? The voice of the Lord cried to the city. Hold it. The man of wisdom shall see thy name. Understand it is God talking. And hear the rod because God got judgment for them that won't hear. And then who hath appointed it? Now, when the rod is appointed, that means, praise God, you done went too far. 
and pray. I don't care who you get so-called anointed, pray for you. God ain't here, none of it, and judgment is coming. Sure enough. All right, and now in this pleasure mad, sin soaked, lust filled world that we live in now. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of God declares what time we're living in. In 2 Timothy 3 and verse, verse 1, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of themselves. Proud, boasters, heavy, high-minded, lovers of what? Lovers of pleasures. I ain't stunt pleasing God. It's all about my flesh. Why well, bless his name? Do you not know that the, the atmosphere is filled with devils that used to be the angels of God? But to show you how persuasive Satan is, a third of God's angels, remember now, don't never forget this, Angels were created by God, but he gave them the same thing he gave us, a free will. If there was no free will, then praise God, they wouldn't have rebelled. Show sure enough. Get that now. Keep it in your mind. They rebelled against God, and brother God showed who's, who's a top dog, so to speak. How he threw him out. He didn't accidentally. He threw him out. And he fell down to this earth, and he became the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that's working in every person that's not saved. There's a spirit in you, man. There's a spirit in you, woman. Hallelujah. And Jesus called him a liar, the father of the lie. He was a murderer from the beginning. So, lady, gentlemen, you that's watching this TV, I, this, amen, on your TV, wherever you're watching me, if you are not saved, the devil is your daddy. Sure enough. And you that said here, if you're not saved, the devil is your dad. Oh, I don't believe that. Right, that's okay. It don't make no difference. The Bible is right. Jesus said, praise God, everybody that's not saved, they're controlled by their flesh in turn, which is controlled by the devil. You believe it, say bad. And the only way to get loose is to trust God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, why do we need Jesus Christ? Because we can't save ourselves. Why? Is God come in the flesh in Jesus? Because he already made a declaration when man fell in the Garden of Eden. Um, amen. Now, nah, Genesis 3.15. Huh? I'm going to put hot wall or enemy between you and that woman. Between your seed, the Antichrist, and her seed. Now, anybody know anything about biology? The woman don't carry no seed. She's the incubator that carries that seed until that seed becomes, gets, amen, full develop, and then she delivers. The man carried the seed. Why didn't Jesus have an earthly daddy? Why didn't he have an earthly daddy? Because the blood was tainted. Adam's blood was tainted. And so, God said, this is the first mention in Genesis 3.15 about the virgin born son of God. Her seed. And he said, that seed is going to bruise your head. And you're going to bruise his heel. Didn't they do it on Calvary? Didn't they nail those spikes just like God said through his heel? Didn't they now? Nah. But brothers and sisters, when he stepped on the scene, began casting out devils, amen, healing the sick, raising the dead, he, amen, Satan's control over man was over. Now, now we serve sin because we want to serve sin. He did not create us mindless automatons. He didn't create us robots. Why? Because if he created us robots, we would automatically obey him. He would have obedience, but he wouldn't have worship. Huh? A machine can't worship. A robot can't worship. Why? He ain't got no feelings. He ain't got no affections. You'd be saying that. Huh? He would have obedience, but he wouldn't have worship. Hallelujah. Why? He don't have a free will. You do whatever you program to do. Show sure up. Hallelujah. And so pray God because he gave us a free will. We have this prime and privileged opportunity to live our lives to please him. And therein lies the power. When I take me off the throne and let him reign like he's supposed to reign, my God, it's good in the neighborhood. Sure enough now. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, it's good in the neighborhood. Why? I don't have to figure out what I'm going to do. I just take God's word and say, okay, this is the path that I'm going to walk in. Hallelujah. He leads me in a plain path. Amen. Not only that, but he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm going to lead you and guide you into all truth. I'm going to send my word and I'm going to send my spirit to teach you, to train you what's right and what's wrong. What's for me? And the way the enemy camouflages is what he does. Sure enough. Praise God. God, let me not believe it, but sure enough, God knows I'm preaching good this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, we're in the last days. Regardless, thank you, Sister Edna. We are in the last days. And in the last days, he's told us the things that we would look for to let us know we're living in the last days. In Romans chapter 1. Let's go there. I want Romans chapter 1. Why is there so much judgment falling all over this world here? Why are the tornadoes and hurricanes? Why are the tsunami? Why is all this violence and all this other stuff? Why? God is judging us. He's judging this nation because America has been exposed. I dare say this nation was founded on the word of God. In spite of men. Romans 1 and verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You look this way here. He got to be talking not just about the wicked that are in authority, but he got to be talking about the preachers. Show enough. Uh, show enough now. If you look at what we just read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, I quoted that. In that fifth verse, he said they would have a form of godliness. That's talking about the church folks. Form of godliness, but denying the power. Show enough. Right here, we hear the results of people living in sin. So, no. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteous, ungodliness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Why? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. In them. For God has shown it unto them for the invisible things of him from creation of the world are clearly seen. I hey, y'all look this way here. Don't we see God in the, in the nature? Let, let me help y'all this morning. And I'm going to help myself too. Marcus, I, I, look at a tree, just one tree. I challenge you. Try to find one leaf, leaf that's exactly like the, another. You can't find two to save your life. Brother, God is so powerful until, pray God, I, I, I allow twins to come through the womb. But you'll be able to, I, that mama can identify who's who. Hallelujah. They may look the same on the outside, but there's just one thing that make them different. Hallelujah. But God did that. God did that. Hallelujah. I think about the rainbow. The rainbow for those sisters. The rain, why bless his name? The rainbow in front of those lesbians and sodomites. No, so the rainbow is God covered us. They pray God, when they got out of hand in the days of Noah, I destroyed this place with a flood. But Noah, I'm giving you, I'm making a covenant with you, and I'm making a covenant with all of my creation that I will not flood this earth again. And brother, I'm going to put my bow in the sky. And ladies and gentlemen, God is good for his word. Now, ain't he now? Now, he done came close with these tsunamis. But, brother, he didn't flood this whole earth. Hallelujah. And I thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good for his word. You'll be saved bad. And I praise God for his word. Amen. But now notice, this next time is going to be destroyed by fire. Hallelujah. Let's read Romans 1 and verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even God's eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, you know, I got to, I got to tackle it. Y'all get tired of me talking about it, but I got to. Why? Because if you come out of this school system, you've been trained 12 years that ain't no God. Sure enough. But notice now, listen to this right here. Hey, listen to this right here. Because when God's power is manifest, you can't, listen, if we were in evolution, if we actually came through evolution and we went from a, uh, some kind of soup to a, 
amoeba and we crawl out of the soup as an amoeba and then we went from there to you know a you know a pterodactyl and all of this and then man that got up and started coming ooga looga and all this stuff. if we and then we came from apes now if we came from apes how come the rest of the apes ain't coming along for the ride if evolution is continually going that means that everything we came out of is evolving into us come on out of here the thing won't even hold water. But they are so, the devil has been instrumentally seducing and training a whole generation to deny God. And brother, we in this book, and show sure enough, we in this book, everything that God said was going to happen in the last day is happening. Let's read, let's read, because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imagination. And their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like it to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Did he not warn Israel in Exodus 20? I'm the Lord your God. You shall have no other God before me. You should not make under deal what? Any graven image. And what did we read there? They, cha they, they changed the glory of God, uncorrupted God into an image made like it to a man, to birds, to four beating beasts and creeping things. Now didn't God tell him he was going to judge him? Didn't he not? Didn't he tell Israel he going to judge him? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Malachi 3 and 6, I am the Lord your God. I change it not. When they went in left field, I judged them. And you church folks, I'm going to judge you. You ain't going to play around on God. Jesus said, you're not from me, you're against me. You in or you out. Hallelujah. Matthew, the sixth chapter and the 24th verse, he said, no man can serve two masters. And when he say no man, he mean no man. Hallelujah. Why, he'll love one and hate the other, or he'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon means the world. That's why we got a whole lot of scripture to us church folks to come out of the world. Touch not the unclean thing. Don't try to play back forth because praise God, if you ever get the mind that you're going to slip in and out, God not ready to turn you loose. Don't you let nobody fool you. Hallelujah. And next thing you know, you won't know where God went. And you'll set up under God's word and won't feel no kind of conviction. Hallelujah. Why? Because of the soothing serp that has came over many pulpits. We under grace. But they bypassed Titus 2 and 11. Hallelujah. I'm not going to quote it. You read it for yourself. I quoted it already. Grace teach us how to live. But for God. Hallelujah. And so this morning in this series, I'm going to hammer down. Amen. Praise the Lord about living holy and living for God. Living to please God. Let's read on. Verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanness. Look this way here. Now ain't it there? Ain't we there now? Ain't we there now? Huh? Uncleanness mean ungodly sexual acts. Not just men with men. Not just women with women. But people with beasts. Hallelujah. I heard a man say, pray God, when he, he amen, pray God, confronted their, their uh, school board. I think it was in Georgia. And he said, when they tried to pass this junk, when they tried to push it off on the people about it's okay for you to have sex with a man, to marry a man. They tried to, and that man stood there, my God, and he told him, hey, look at him. If y'all let this thing go from one thing to another, next thing you know, there'll be a marching for the right to have sex with their dogs, have sex with their cats. Show sure enough now. Oh, y'all ain't got to take it. But one sure thing about it, you'll never leave this church without knowing what the devil is doing and then putting your trust in God as we see this evil day approaching. Hallelujah. Let's read on. Verse, verse 25. Verse 24. Wherefore God gave them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who, creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen means this settled. 
for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. Why? For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. All these sexually transmitted diseases. And even, now here's the problem right here. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them all over to a reprobate mind to do these those things which are not convenient. Everybody look this way here. Hadn't he done that to this nation? Hadn't he done that to this nation? Hadn't he done that to this nation? So sure now, it started with Bill Clinton perverting the armed forces with don't ask, don't tell. Next thing that black man got in there and they passed the right for a man to marry a man, a woman to marry a woman. Then this thing that we got in there now passed what they call the equality bill. And I told y'all that's going to wreck the health care system. Sure is. Y'all ain't got to take it. But what we're reading right now is America. And every nation that has given over to that spirit. See, we're dealing with spirit. This ain't no flesh and blood fight. These are demon spirits working with people's mind. Hallelujah! But this is why God saved us. And I never dreamed that they have prominent so-called preachers agreeing with that mess. That's why we don't hear a whole lot of preaching against sin among us. Sure enough. Can't do nothing but put me out the domination, but I want to stay in God. Amen. Now, hallelujah. And praise God. Listen, brothers and sisters, I told y'all many years ago, look at how that, that enemy is seducing us. I'm talking about over, over here. Well, now, praise God. It ain't about the foundation of this church. It ain't about the foundation that this, this particular denomination was based upon. The women looking like Jezebel. The preachers is preaching like Ahab. And brothers and sisters, God is mad at us. How else can you explain him killing our preachers? Yes, sir. How else can you explain? If God ain't mad with us, then don't you know more of us will be healed? Every hole in the denomination, the devil has infiltrated the ranks. Under the guise of trying to be a seeker friendly church. God put a name on it. He said, Praise God. You can be sinner friendly. We friends with sinners, but we don't agree with sinners. See, we got a different standard over him. God's standard is Jesus Christ. It ain't a denomination. It ain't well, amen. Now it ain't a church creed. The standard is Jesus Christ. So sure enough. And if we don't live to please God, we got to follow the standard. Amen. Not a standard. The standard. Why? He perfectly pleased the Father. Hey, you got your pens and your pencils. Jot this down. When he went down to meet John the Baptist, go get baptized. In Matthew chapter 3, the Bible declares when he went down and that when John baptized him, when he came up, hallelujah, Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost descended from heaven and lighting up on him to let John know that this is the one. And brother of God spoke out of heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. <laughs> and brother, when he came about that water, God, the Holy Ghost sent him into the wilderness to put a boot in the devil's butt. Sure enough. All right. When he came to Matthew, in the book of Matthew, the 17th chapter, jot that down. Matthew, the 17th chapter, the Bible declares that he took Peter, James, and John up on a high mountain. And while they was up there, Moses and Elijah appeared unto them, talking with the Lord. And Peter got so excited, he said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. <laughs> Said we build a tabernacle for you, a tabernacle for Moses, and a tabernacle for Elijah. Elijah represents the prophets. Moses represents the law. And Jesus straightened, amen, Jesus straightened him out. 
excuse me, God straightened them out. The Bible declares that a bright cloud overshadowed them. Hallelujah. And God said, praise God, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And note, hear ye him. Why? Moses ain't died for nobody. Elijah ain't gave his life for nobody. Jesus Christ deserved that platform. He's the only one to be worshipped. Amen. Hallelujah. And so God said, this is my beloved one in whom I'm well pleased. All right, turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give me that 17th verse, son. Colossians 1, 17. Read. And he is before all things. He's what, church? He is before all things. Why? Because he made all things. He's first. Read. And by him all things consist. Read it. And he is the head of the body. He is the what? Head of the body. Now, what is his body? The church. Read. The church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Notice, the firstborn from the dead never to die no more. All right? If he's the firstborn, there's got to be a what? A second born, a third born, which is talking about us. We were raised from the deadness of sin, and now over here, we put to death our flesh, our worldly desires, our ambitions. We put it to death. Read, son. That in all things he may have the preeminence. The, the preeminence now. Read it. For it pleased the Father that in him should it all. It did what, church? Please the Father. That I said he perfect. He's the example because he perfectly pleased the Father. All right, let's go to Philippians chapter two. Let's deal with you and me, because the only way we can please the Father is to offer up ourselves. All right, when you get Philippians chapter two, I want to go back to the foundation of this series of messages in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Y'all stay right there. Listen. Jot it down. Please. Don't take my word for nothing. You got to get it out the book. It ain't my word. It's his word. But remember now. Everything was made by him. And for him. We're here to please him. Alright as obedient to Jesus ain't on this earth. His spirit is on this earth. And it's in us. In order to win us to live this life. Hallelujah. All right, Philippians 2 and verse 12. Let's read it. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. Now, this is a mark of a true saint. But now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? For it is God which worketh in you, both the will and to do of what? Do all things without what? Murmuring and complaining. Why? That you may be blameless. Now ain't that good? If we do everything he told us without arguing with him. Just do it. Somebody say just do it. Somebody say just do it. No, I'm not going to tell you to talk to your neighbor. I get so sick and tired. Tell your neighbor. Talk to your neighbor. Prophesy to you. I get so sick and tired of that mess. If you're going to preach, preach. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. Why? That you may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation like America. Among whom we shine as lights in the world holding forth the what? Holding forth the what? Now here's the power. God's power is in his word. That power is manifest when we obey his word. That's the miracle of John 8, 31 and 32. 
Hallelujah. You got to hear it and believe it. Huh? Then said Jesus to those Jews that believed on him, if you continue in my word, that's where the power is. That's where the true power is to change us from worldly to saints, to change us from lust driven to Holy Ghost led. You believe me? Say, man. Huh? That's the difference. That word, following his word, obeying his word, continuing in his word is what makes us disciples. Disciples are power. That's the power of following him. He makes you a disciple. Now, how many know what discipline is? How many know what discipline is? That means you are given over to a set of teachings, or the Bible calls doctrine. You're given over to that. He said, Jesus said in John 8, 32, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Now, how do you know you're a disciple? By continuing in the word. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free from what? Free from the control of sin, that sin nature that's in my flesh and in your flesh, whether you saved or not. But the Bible tells us, he commands us to crucify this flesh. Oh, y'all ain't got to take it. Let me name the idols that have pulled true worship away from God's people. Television, the internet, a tick-tock goes the clock, a phase book, the sports figures, the entertainment industry, you name it, the devil. Hey, the television is doing most of his work for it. Sure enough now. Hallelujah. You know when you, you're really bound by television when you, you got to see what you see. Huh? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, nah, why? That thing got a hold on you. You need to be saved, man. Hollywood ain't never been for us. That's why God is condemning us because we're taking our cue from Hollywood. We looking like Jesse Bell. Hallelujah. Sure enough. Why you on the women so much? Because however the women go, that's how the church go. Sure enough. If the women become hoes in the church, you gonna have, you can't be hoes without whole mongers. Out of the pulpit. Off of the deacon boat, you can't have hoes without whole mongers. Oh, you see, you, you're too vulgar. Hey, hoes in the Bible. Whole mongers in the Bible. God name you what you is. You, amen. You pray whether you deny it or not. Hey, I'm not talking about you falling the world. And I'm not talking about you falling by a denomination, a denomination of doubt. I'm talking about us living to please God in whatever time I got left, whatever time you got left. Why? Because God has numbered our days. Don't you forget that now. Don't you forget that now. God has already determined how many days we're going to be on this earth. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If he already know how many hairs on my head, you better know. He didn't already determine how much when I'm gonna take out my last breath. And you too. That's why I can't get caught up in myself. <laughs> I can't get caught up in myself. What I want, what I desire. What do you desire, Lord? What do you want me to do with my time left here, Lord? Douglas, get saved. Lord, I thank you. I done got saved. All right, what do you want me to go from now? All right, I'm going to give you this book. I want you to study this book and apply it to your life. Okay, Lord, I'm doing that now. What else? What else? I'm going to give you hope, and I'm going to show you the end of those that crucify their flesh and walk after the Spirit. I'm going to show you in my word what happens to those who are exposed to the word and either obey or disobey. I can't make nobody love God. But me. I can't make nobody live for God. But me. I got a free will just like you got a free will. I can turn a deaf ear or I can obey God. Huh? Show sure enough. Hallelujah. Holding forth the word of God of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. Hallelujah. All right. Now, Jesus Christ is the example. The Bible declares in 1 Peter 2.21 that Christ left us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was any guile found in his mouth. Amen. And the Bible declares that Jesus Christ became our sin. No, notice, notice. 
Jesus Christ, the spotless lamb, became our sin. That's what Isaiah 53 is all about. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This is the thing that get me. God didn't have no pleasure in killing him. But the Bible says in Isaiah 53, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Show sure enough. Why? Because he didn't bruise him. Uh, says Colin, he going to bruise us. Show sure enough. Hallelujah. And I'm glad, amen. I'm glad for Jesus. How many glad for Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise God. Many times we talk about him suffering for us. We leave him on the cross. But brother, he got up. Amen. Now, he took our, our sins to hell. He left them there and pulled Isaiah, Jeremiah, Abraham. He pulled all of those saints out of the compartment that's down in the heart of this earth. Amen. Now, paradise in this earth is empty now. Wherefore, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Woo! Hallelujah. What are those gifts? Apostles, evangelists, prophets, pastors, teachers. You may not treat me like no gift, but I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said you may not treat the preacher as a gift from God, but he is. Because who else can stir you in that right direction? Who else, amen, can pick your mind when you got going in left field? Hallelujah. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How beautiful are the feet. My feet are beautiful. Of them that preach the gospel of peace. Why? God ain't mad with you no more. He ain't mad with us. He ain't mad with the sinner. He's angry. But he ain't mad. Psalm 7 and verse 11. God judges the righteous. But he's angry with the wicked every day. But he's sending the gospel toward the wicked. For them to be unwicked. I know. Hey, I just invented a word. Huh? Thank you. Y'all remember un? You got your cola and you got your uncola. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. He sent Jesus in order to deliver us. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. When he came, he came fulfilling scriptures. So Brother Willie, in Psalm 40, David testified. He prophesied about him. Psalm 40, verse 6. Sacrifice and offering thou wouldst not, but a body you prepared me. Lo! I come. I delight to do your will, O God. Son, give me Romans 10 and verse 4. He said, I delight to do your will, O God. Hallelujah. Psalms 10 and verse 4. Read, son. Psalms 10 is a Romans 10. Romans 10, I'm sorry. Romans 10 and verse 4. Read it. For Christ is the end of the law. Christ is the what? End of the law. Read. For righteousness to everyone that believe it. Read it. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. What is the righteousness of the law? That the man which doeth those things. You in Hebrews 10 4. I'm sorry. Hebrews 10 4, son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so excited. I thank God for this word. Amen. I've been chewing on this about two or three weeks. Read, son. Hebrews 10 and verse 4. Read. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and All right, of look, goats. Uh, look, at, look, look, saints. Everything that God told them Israelites to offer in the wilderness was types and, types and shadows pointing toward Jesus Christ. What Jesus was going to do to fulfill Genesis 3.15. Show sure enough. How every bullock, every heifer, every heifer, huh? Every turtle dove, every sheep, every goat, every one of them. But that, those sacrifices couldn't take away sin. They couldn't deliver you from sin. Holy, why? Because your nature had to be changed. And ain't nobody changing natures but Jesus Christ when he come. But in order for God not to judge the sinners in Israel, that priest went before God with that blood. Why? The life is in the blood. You don't believe it? Get cut and bleed out now. That blood is living. The body is dead. But the blood is alive. Read, son. Hebrews 10 and 4. For Read. It's not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Can't do it. Read. Wherefore, when he comes. What is God's intention? What is God's intention for us? I'm not going to cover your sin. I'm going to take away that sin nature. And put my spirit in you. Look out 2 Peter 3. He said we've been become partakers of his divine nature read son 
Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, Re! he said, Sacrifice and offering. Notice now, he came into this world fulfilling Psalm 40, verse 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Read, son. That what is not, but a body has thou prepared. Read it! In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. No what? Pleasure. Read it! Then said I, Lo, Lo. I come in the volume of the Here book. Here I am, Lord. Ah! Why bless his name? I represented you on this earth here. I represented your power, your authority, and now I got to go. Now, if it be your will, move this cup. Never, the last, not my will, but your will be done. Read, son. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. What book? What do. book? What is written of Jesus? Brother and sister, you got it in your lap. Everything from Genesis to Revelation point toward Jesus Christ. Read, son. To do thy will, O God. Read. Above, when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings. Read it. And offering for sin thou wouldest not. Read it. Has thy pleasure in therein. Read. Which are offered by the law. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, to O God. He taketh away the first. Notice, he took away the, the first ordinances that they had to have a, a priest. Now, notice what he's doing. Y'all look this way here. Them Hebrews are caught up in the law. When they start getting saved, they tried to hold on to the law, not realizing Paul spent a whole, four, how many chapters in there? 14 chapters, I believe. 14, 15, 16 chapters. One of, he sent a whole letter trying to explain to them that, brother, what they was doing pointing toward Jesus Christ. He done came. You got to get him while he's here now. You got to get him. Read, son. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. He is established as our great what? Our great high priest. All right. In order for you and me to please God, we got to put the death. Now, in the Old Testament, it may, when it talks about sacrifice, it's talking about the death of an animal. Amen. But the life of that animal is in the blood. Show sure enough. And as Jesus Christ willingly laid down his life for us. We lay down our lives for him. We present our lives to him. Now, how did I do that? Turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. Ye then that are risen with Christ. What does it mean to be risen with Christ? It means to be lifted out of the deadness of sin. I want to see the hand of every one of y'all that just like to be deceived. Let me see your hand. Let me put my hand down. I said every one of y'all that like to be deceived. Every individual that's not saved is blinded. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the fourth verse talks about the God of this world. Notice, little G-O-D has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. Let's read. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Where is Christ? Where is Christ? Notice, seek those things now. Now what things? Well, praise the Lord. Ain't that good that I know I got some up there waiting on me? I, Isaiah prophesied it. Paul quoted it. Eyes have not seen, neither have they heard. Neither is entered into the heart of man. The things that what? The things which God has in store for them that love him. How many are glad that God love you? How many are glad that, hey, this thing is worth it? It's worth it. Whatever I suffer over him, and they, don't you let nobody fool you. And God, please don't misunderstand me. It ain't all suffering over here. You know what the most suffering it is? It's when you deny yourself. Show sure enough. And literally take up this cross to follow Jesus Christ. Family goes against you. Communities goes against you. Amen. Hallelujah. But it doesn't make no difference. There's a peace in our heart to let us know we're on the right track. To stay with Jesus. Show sure enough. Why? Because mama can't put me nowhere. Daddy can't put me nowhere. Hallelujah. Community, a job can't put me nowhere. I ain't got no hope other than that. When I leave this world other than Jesus Christ, let's read. Set your affections on things above and not on the things of the earth. Why? For you are dead. You are what? Now he's talking to folks that's living. 
and telling them the mystery of Jesus Christ is that we die to our ambitions, our fleshly desires. We die to that. You are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Ain't that the way, that the way it reads? When Christ, not if Christ, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall we appear with him in glory. Huh? Three, verse five. Mortify therefore your members which are upon. See that? Now what is he talking about members? Your hands, your feet, your secret parts, your eyes. Your ears, hey, y'all look this way here. You know you can't unsee something that you done saw. You can't unhear something that you done heard. The thing is, when it gets past your spirit and gets down in you, now you got a problem. Sure enough. That's why he told us, meditate on this day and night. But Pastor, if I did that, I can't watch no movies. I, oh, my God. When I was growing, when I first got saved, they was... Telling us we couldn't go to no picture shows. <sighs> well, since the kings couldn't go to the picture show, Mark, then the devil made it easy, amen. Just told you, get you a black box. Amen. We ain't got to go nowhere to learn how to learn sin, amen. But they bringing it right to your doorstep. Show sure enough now. And I tell you, they taking it off now. Hallelujah. They was taking it off when, amen, prayer. I was bought off in there. I know they about to went over the, over the, the amen prayer. They ain't got no standards now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read. Mortify that your member, therefore your members upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affections, evil concupiscence, that means unbridled lust, and covetousness, which is what? Which is what? Don't God hate idolatry still? This is why we're reading this. Which for things, which things sake. The wrath of God coming on the children of disobedience. All right, you can't be a child of disobedience unless you know what to obey. So he got to be talking by church, folks. Trying to play both sides. Amen. Not just the wicked now. Let's get that straight. Let's read on. For which things sake the wrath of God coming on the children of disobedience in which, in the which you also sometimes when you lived in them, but now, but what? You also have put off. Oh my God. He telling me that I got the power to do what? To put off all of these. Anger. <laughs> wrath. Malice. Bliss, blasphemy. Filthy communication out of my mouth. Lie not one to Oh my God. Lie not. Boy, that's going to get a whole bunch of folks out of the church house in the, in the lake. Lie not one to another sin that you have put off the old man and his deeds and put, have put on the what? The new man which is renewed in knowledge. How is he renewed in knowledge? Romans 12 and 2. Don't be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to have a new mind. He gives us the mind of Christ. The question is whether we're going to let the mind operate in us. And to put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. All right. This is how we crucify our flesh, saints. Colossians 3 is how we crucify our flesh by making a conscious choice to turn from worldly pleasures and turn to God's word. Show sure enough. Because if I don't, if you don't, you going the other way. But Pastor, I've been saved for years. That's you talking. Ain't none of us no shoe in until we leave this world and get over there. Huh? Huh? Now, if I was going to get saved and then don't have to do nothing, that'd be a different story. Sure enough. But why do we have a whole lot of New Testament telling us how to live? If there were no consequences for us not living it. Romans 13, turn with me, please. Romans 13 and verse, verse 11. We got to spend our time wisely. Romans 13 and verse 11. And that, that knowing the time that now is, it is high time. Why? Because we're in the last days. It's our time to wake out of sleep. Talking to church folks that are not sober. Church folks who are not vigilant will eat from any table. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about different doctrines now, you see. 
For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. See there, see there, he's telling me to do this. He's telling the saints to do this. Cast off the works of darkness, let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk earnestly as in the day, not in rioting, parties, and drunkenness, pardon. Not in chamber and in wantonness. Mm -hmm. Not in strife or envy. Notice what he said. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. All right. We, I got a second Corinthians 5 and 17 now. The Bible says, praise God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All right, number one, we get a whole new life. We get a whole new way of living. First Peter 1, verse 15 and 16. But as he would just call us as holy, so be us holy in all manner of conversation, lifestyle. Why? Because it's written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And notice, and if I call, if you call, if we call upon him who is without respect of person, let us pass the time of our sojourning down here in fear. Y'all there? First Peter chapter 1. I'm in that 17th verse. And if you call on the Father, who without respect the person, judge it according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Why? For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain life's conversation. Received by the tradition of your fathers. But you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. Ever the lamb without blemish and without spot. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Look at God. Look at God. But was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God. That raised him up from the dead and gave him glory. That my faith, that your faith, that our faith and hope might be in him seeing now seeing that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through sp the spirit unto unfailing love of the brethren see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently notice being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible now what is that incorruptible seed the word of God which liveth and abided forever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my God Whew. son give me 1 John 5 and verse 18 I want that right now see there's a difference there is a difference and we make that difference 1 John 5 and 18 read we know that whosoever is born of God sin it not. Read it. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. Read it. And that wicked one toucheth him not. Read it. And we know that we are of God and the whole world Notice. lieth in wickedness. Pay attention. The whole world lieth in wickedness. It's satanically inspired full of lust. Read son. And we know that the son of God is come. And had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. Now, if we know him that's true, then can't nobody hoodwink us? The devil can't pull a wool over our eyes? All right, we got a brand new life and then we got a brand new hope. In 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 13, 14, 15, 16, all the way down to that 18th verse, he talks about the saints that have died in Christ that are going to be raised. Amen. Now, we got a hope beyond this world here. Amen. Hallelujah. When a saint dies, he goes immediately in the presence of God. When a sinner dies, he goes to hell to be held there and tormented there until the white throne judgment. And from there into the lake of fire. But in 1 Thessalonians 4, we have a new hope. We have a new hope that the Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel, and only the saints going to hear that shout. Now, what I'm saying now, people laugh about it. Hey, I know preachers that laugh about it. Ain't, you can't find rapture in the Bible. Yeah, but you can find the catching away. 
But he said the Lord himself should descend from heaven with the shout, with the trump of God, the voice of the archangel. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. My hope is in Jesus Christ. We got a new life. We got a new hope. And then we got a new destination. Okay, everybody turn with me to Revelation 21. I want all of us to read this. Because remember now, in the fourth chapter and the eleventh verse, he say, now for thy pleasure we were and are and were created. We created to please him. When we please him, this is the end of those that please him. Y'all there? Revelation 21 and verse 6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. You got to come see me. For you go out into eternity, you got to come see me. You got to come by me. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcome it. Listen, church folks. Listen, saints. Ain't no such thing as me going up there without being an overcomer down here. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. Go next door to the 22nd chapter. This is why our salvation is near than when we first believed. Revelation 22 and verse 12. Let's read it. Let's read that together. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. See, a lot of things that we done forgot, Brother Willie, is coming up again. And everybody's going to get paid in full. <laughs> I am, uh, here it is again. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Notice, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now you tell me. Living holy, is it worth it? Living to please God, is it worth it? Close your Bibles. Last time I stood in this pulpit, I came down and I actually declared what I am. I am a hunter. Hallelujah. I don't hunt animals. I hunt souls. 